Hi everybody! Today I'll do a short video log showing how you can use uh, thermal forming of uh, plastic to make uh, nice and tight fitting uh, stencils for your low painting. Well, if you're painting lures like this one that has a lot of features and is uh, round and has a lot of shapes on it, it's, it's very easy to see that if you lose the stencils that I normally use, which are flat, it would be very hard to get a good contact with the lure and making uh, every edge on the, on the print here very blurry. Um, so what I've been testing this summer is something called thermal forming of plastic, which will uh, make me able to make a stencil like this one. As you can see, this one is uh, quite curvy and uh, I've cut out the fins for this one and as you can see it fits tightly around the, the lure giving me a very good, uh, very few uh, cracks to, for the paint to, to um, spray into and giving me very sharp uh, edges when I do the painting. Well, one of the most important parts of the thermal forming is uh, of course the plastic sheets uh, I tested out a few different things uh, during the summer period, uh, but um, only one thing uh, seemed to work and this is uh, some placings that are actually meant for thermal forming. Uh, these ones are 0 0.5 millimeters thick. Um, I think you could go even thinner, uh, which would make it a bit easier to cut them out. But um, this is working very good and giving you uh, quite a, a, a hard and stable um, stencil. Uh, but you could consider uh, testing something uh, thinner. I know I will at some point. This is also called uh, PETG platings uh, and I'm sure you can find them uh, in, uh, in um, online. Uh, I know I found mine on uh, eBay but there's probably other places as well. Well, it comes like this or rather like this because uh, you will get them delivered with some uh, plastic sheets on for protection to prevent them from um, from being scratched and uh, if I can just show you well you can just peel this off for my purpose it doesn't really matter if it has a few scratch but uh, I know that they have been used for um, for windows or in frames uh, for pictures so um, of course uh, they would like uh, some protection to prevent the scratch. Well, apart from that, you'll need to make yourself a vacuum box, like this one. This is just a box uh, I've made out of some MDF plates. Um, you could probably use other materials as well. It, uh, it has a hole in it, a rather big hole that fits my vacuum cleaner uh, nice and tight, so I can put that one in. And then on one side I have drilled a lot of holes and this will be my vacuum surface um, which, uh, on which I will place my lures. Apart from that I've made a frame from aluminum. Um, it doesn't really have to be an aluminum but still it has to be something that can uh, go into the oven and, uh, um, and stand the heat without getting soft or bent. Uh, I made uh, two frames, which together has a quite a nice uh, fit. And if I take a piece of um, plate here and place it in between my frames, like that, I'll just uh, have these small metal um, clamps here that will keep the frame together. I usually use a lot more, so this is just for showing. Well, this will all go into the oven. And once the, the plating is quite uh, soft, I will uh, take it out and uh, put it here on my vacuum box and it will be socked down and um, fit closely around whatever I have put here on my vacuum board. Of course, for me, it would be some uh, lures. And as you can see, like any ordinary TV kitchen style. I have already tried this. As you can see here's, uh, oh sorry, this one fell out. This is uh, my uh, my crank uh, lure and my um, the jerk. 
and uh, as you can see, well, yeah, this is the result. So what remains from here is just to cut it out, cut out whatever um, shapes you would like to uh, have a stencil of, and uh, well, go on painting. Well, I started out by placing four half lures here on my uh, vacuum box. As you can see, I've uh, placed them on some small pieces of wire, which will just uh, lift them up from the vacuum box holes and make sure that there's a bit of vacuum even uh, from underneath the, the four pieces here. Uh, the box itself has been attached to my vacuum cleaner, uh, which is sufficient uh, to, uh, to create the vacuum needed for, for this purpose. And in my aluminum frame here, which um, can take some heat, I've placed a sheet of the, the PEGD, PEGD plate, uh, the plastic plate, and um, well, now we are ready to put it into the oven. The oven is now heating up to 200 degrees Celsius, and at that temperature I know it takes about 40-50 seconds for the plastic to melt, uh, enough to me to do the vacuum forming. Well, the, the oven is ready and we are now ready to do the, the thermoforming. Uh, so I'll uh, just uh, place my, my frame into the oven here. Let's see. There's a bit of smoke in here, like that. Close the oven and I'll start the clock. I need about 40 seconds. So I'll just, oh, I just need to attach my vacuum cleaner like that. Okay, I know it's a bit noisy now, but uh, I've attached and uh, started the vacuum cleaner and I'm putting on my gloves because the frame will be hot when I get it out there. So I'll just be waiting 40, 50 seconds. When you look into the oven, you might be able to see the, the plastic starting to hang down. I won't give it much more than 40 seconds. Okay. That was 40 seconds, so I'll just grab my frame here and place it on my lures. And as you can see, it quickly sucks down and uh, shapes around the lures. And I'll just leave it there for a few seconds to harden. I can see from the, the plastic here that maybe it was even too much with the 40 seconds, but uh, it doesn't really matter because it's looking very good. So now I'll just uh, I'll turn off the, the vacuum cleaner and just uh, leave it here for a second to, uh, to harden. I think it's um, it's already there. I can probably pick it up. It's not that hot the frame, but as you can see. Um, it's been hot enough for even the to be sucked down to the holes. Well, this is looking very good. Nice tight fit around the lures. Well, I just uh, thought that we should um, give the new uh, tight fitting uh, thermoformed uh, stencils a try. Um, and as uh, I have quite a lot of uh, American subscribers, I thought I should do something for, for those. And uh, today I'll try to do an interpretation of a, a baby bass. First of all, I've made um, these ones that are the, the gill plates and mouth parts of the lure. Those will be separate ones. And then uh, I'll also uh, be doing these that will uh, assemble, resemble the, the the pattern uh, down like uh, the side of the of the bass, and uh, these I've just cut out with a min uh, an normal scalpel or a sharp knife. Uh, it's a bit hard on these uh, half a millimeter plate, and that's uh, why you should uh, maybe consider trying something thinner. But uh, these parts I will just uh, I've just uh, printed out on a piece of paper here, and I'll just. Uh, Use some scotch tape here to uh, position them 
on the on the lure here while I take my my Dremel and um, remove the the areas that I want painted. So well, let's just uh, try that. I have a very thin uh, point here, uh, grinding thing. I don't know what it's called. And let's just see how it works. Okay, and uh, it's a bit hard to see what you're doing. Um, so what I'll do now, I'll just take a, a pen here and uh, try to paint along the edges of each hole so I can see uh, what is actually going on. Okay, I don't know um, how much you can see, but um, I think this is more or less okay. Well, I started out by um, priming up a, a few uh, lures here with, uh, with white primer. And now I'll uh, give them all the, the belly and the sides uh, a, a, a spray of uh, pearlized white. So I'll just get rid of these two. I'll now give them a, a, a yellow tone down the side before I turn up to the, the green uh, back. So just uh, above the center line I will have them a, a nice uh, thin uh, light uh, yellow shade. I'll use this one. And now a uh, green uh, pearlized color down the back and uh, a bit down the sides. Well, I now uh, try to leave a bit of the uh, scale imprint uh, using uh, the the green pearlized color with a little bit of uh, black in it. So I'll just uh, leave a, a faint mark here at the at the top. Uh, or at least I'll try. That is fine. Mm, yeah. Let's see how that turns out.
And here for the last parts, I've taken some of the even already uh, very dark uh, green uh, color and thinned it up with uh, more black. So it's uh, an almost black uh, color now. And I'll just do the last parts with this color. For the last and most exciting part, the part that hopefully would make this look a bit like a baby bass, uh, I hope. Like that? I don't know. Looks good to me. I finished up uh, painting the, the baby bass and I slapped on some ice. And um, well, I'll leave it up to those of you with uh, more experience in bass than me to evaluate on my success on these ones. I think they're looking quite fine, but um, what do I know? What I can comment on is that uh, painting them with the new shape stencils uh, was very easy. And uh, the, the result, I think, for the painting is, is quite nice. So to me, it's a bit of success and I will for sure be using these uh, stencils uh, on, on other baits as well. Well, thank you for watching and I hope you see me soon.